Hello and welcome to this church chat in Mosend and today we're delighted to speak with a couple, a couple in Stevenage all the way down there in England so delighted to welcome today virtually to the church chat studio Peter and Maria Jones are going to tell us about something they're working on just now which is really worth watching so welcome both how are you doing? Thank you John. John lovely to see you, John, lovely to chat, lovely to meet you. <laughs> well, I met you before, Peter. I've not met Maria, but uh, that was a different world so many years ago now. We actually couldn't. <laughs> but I'm glad you're doing well. When we had freedoms. Yeah, John, and great to see you keeping up with all this work you're doing yourself. Thanks very much. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a strange last year for us. We've had to adapt in some ways to the, the pandemic. We're now streaming funerals every day, mainly for people who can't be there. So. <laughs> This is something a bit more positive, this conversation with yourselves, thankfully. <laughs> something a bit more lively. We're talking about life, of course, and we're talking about the fact you and your family, your five children, have started a programme on YouTube talking about family life. Tell us more about it. John, I actually didn't hear your question because I thought you just screamed at the moment that you said <laughs> Well, that, that is part of the question we're talking about today. <laughs> This one of nine channel which you have started, which highlights life as a Catholic family, a big Catholic family, as you can see, you'll get your hands full. Um, what was the sort of inspiration behind starting that channel? Well, I think it's been mulling over us for a little while. We like to, like when we're working in the evenings on our laptops next to each other, we'll just be maybe listening to some, you know, YouTube channel or something in the background, some inspiring American YouTube channel usually. And I think like a few things, you know, we kept we were thinking about. We love, we always love a chat. We love analysing what's going on. And Peter's got all this kit, and he's working for EWTN and working around the place. Great channel, by the way. Great channel. Uh, another great channel. I'll invoice you there for that ad. <laughs> <laughs> so we were thinking, we were thinking maybe we should do a podcast. So about this time last year, we were thinking maybe we do a podcast. We were doing, like putting some plans in place and trying some things out. And then I think it was November, about mid-November, and just a few things all just came together and we were aware that we should start a YouTube channel in two weeks. And so we did. So we just, we started it the Friday before uh, the first Sunday of Advent. And we've been going ever since. We didn't really know, we didn't, so we didn't know all the details. We didn't massively plan it. We had two weeks to do our first video. And then since then we just do um, this video a week. Uh, we felt that, uh, certainly for me, and I think for Peter as well, growing up, there wasn't so much community growing up for us, like many Catholic friends and that sort of thing. Um, and so we've made efforts to to live uh, where we can be linked up with all our communities here. But also, I suppose particularly in lockdown, that's another reason why I suppose we've been moved to do this. Um, it's good to see people. So like in that way, the podcast wasn't so appealing. Um, and it's really great to connect up the country. It's another way that although we're, you know, we're not able to be together, mm. you know, even just in normal life, like I think the mum's life is just busy. You can just get into the day-to-day -day life um, of, you know, schooling, however you do it, breakfast, lunch and dinner, uh, bed routine. And, you know, we're not necessarily getting out so yeah, much. feel anonymous, don't you? feel like, you know, just you and maybe some others and there's, you know, some dream there might be some other Catholics out there doing this, mm. but mm. turns out, you know, one by one, there's quite a few, and they've all got a kind of great story worth telling, I would say. It is, even so far, I think they've been great stories. Mm. You know, even, well, that, really... your, your cinematography is really good as well. I mean, that's obviously your professional skill, but the way you've captured family life and the way it, it's so beautifully presented is quite appealing to watch. You know, it's not something, it's not a boring watch. By any stretch yeah well one of me you know it, it, i kind of think i feel a bit like a sleeper cell you know in, in, in spy movies I've, I've been activated you know there's never been kind of grand plan i've just kind of started doing it and mm. not really stopped you know trying to get one out it'd be regular be consistent i think when you got a de john i'm sure you know as well when you got a deadline mm. and you've got to make a video it, it's a ton of work, isn't it? But if you hit that deadline, it's your kind of your best friend in a way. Yeah. You know, if you just say, if you'll do it at some arbitrary future date, never happens. You kind of don't quite pour yourself into it the way you've got a deadline. So, so once been, a week. Yeah, one a week, trying to do Saturday morning. It turns out Saturday morning has been great. We've, uh, we've had couples saying they watch it in bed or all kinds of funny things anyway. Uh, yeah. But like what, like obviously you've yeah, I know. 
you don't have an overarching theme. So how how do you go about planning your episodes? You know, it's like never work with children and pets. So work out. <laughs> no, no grand plan at the moment. It's kind of we've we've got like a loose overview. Yeah, here. Loose. we've got ideas. This real life mums feature is it just sort of lends itself to the like the theme of the week and things come out of it like the, the week where we spoke about temperament. <laughs> having loads of children and what that looks like when you sort of come through the meal at the end of it sort of thing uh, and you know maybe out out of that high energy zone um, and then that was that kind of theme of the week so the themes have kind of been set themselves and then there were things that were on our mind that we thought would be good to share and I think as well like in the media a lot of Catholic media and obviously you're doing a great job yourselves up there and thank you yeah, um, but otherwise a lot of media I mean particularly mainstream media is bad news so yeah. bad news of Catholic it. so people just don't know and then and I think friends that have grown up with us in like Catholic schooling and that sort of thing they just don't know and then the, and I think it's just I suppose it's a window into life as a Catholic and life as a Catholic for many of us is family life uh, and even hearing like seminarians talking about watching it together and priests watching it and I think even for priests and seminarians again particularly in this time when they're not able to come and, and visit us like seeing who you know the, the sheep of their flock are and seeing what how it is and seeing what we struggle through what our challenges are what the joys are but ultimately like this beautiful Catholic life through the feast and season through the sacraments through going to mass through you know there's one of our episodes we're getting up in the middle of the night for midnight mass mm. um you know all these little like the quirks but the joys. I mean, one um, of the things which is really important about this series is I think nowadays where there's a prevailing narrative that Catholics, uh, not just Catholics, but people in general cannot afford to have, say, more than three children. I mean, maybe even less, maybe more than two. You hear that quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So for people watching who maybe are open to the idea of big families and do want big families, but are scared of the idea, what would you suggest to them? Mm -hmm. Um, so oh, no, go on. <laughs> go on. I put my hand up first. <laughs> so I kind of take the view. You are right. What you're saying there, it's, it's a bit of a culture war, really, and we've not really stepped into as Catholics and maybe as Christians, we're not really stepped into the into that debate with our full weight. Uh, you know, because it is a yeah, people are terrified, even among Catholics, faithful Catholics, terrified maybe of too many children and affording it all. But our predecessors and people that successfully passed on the faith, and I'm sure had happy, fulfilling lives. It would have been on a lot less money, no supermarket aisles, all that kind of stuff. It, we've maybe kind of made a friend too much of comfort. Uh, and, and in that loss, the drama of life, the joy of it all, because well, so it's been an eye-opener to me, getting in the front door of some of these people. Some of them I know a bit, but, you know, when you get in there and you see the life, see the children, certainly the one where they'd all grown up. Maybe I'm, I hope I'm not speaking too fast. Uh, yeah, it's been very encouraging, and that's coming from us as Catholics not super wealthy Catholics, but any stretch of the imagination mm -hmm. and just getting on with it. Uh, we're here to kind of, it's war really, and we're here to kind of make the case for the beauty of this way of life and that you should not be ruling it out by any stretch or giving way to that narrative you're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and I think as well, um, just trusting in, and, and that's what it's all about. You know, we don't really do social commentary or pol politics or anything, but just trusting in the teachings of the Catholic Church and going with it, how does that look? And how does it look for different people? Being open to new life isn't always a big family anyway. So people that feel, you know, worried about it, I think just put it in God's hands in many ways, bring it to prayer. Um, and God God decides. And if God thinks, you know, you can deal with it, then then you're, yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. you right. and God are in a team and, and are gonna, it's going to happen. And I sometimes I say that prayer to God, wow. For this challenge i'm not really sure how i'm going to do it but you obviously think i can so help me out please <laughs> and i'll look forward to growing through it you know in virtual or something but you know there are challenges it doesn't mean it's easy mm. uh, but it is like you say the dramas of life and you yeah, miss out on that fun. if you just yeah this sort of over planned um it's not a kind of god's way like what what kind of a life for a catholic is it i mean you are going to take a deep breath you're like, how am i going to get through this i can do it every day almost uh <laughs> What kind of a life is it for a Catholic if you've not really trusted in God, if you kind of say, right, God, you know, they're all lovely ideas, but you know, I've got my own plans there. You know, it's not, get to the end of your life. Like, kind of never really, I didn't abandon God, but blow me down. Didn't exactly get into it either. And hopefully at the end of these, you know, if we keep going, God willing, I don't know how we do it, but that's part of the miracle of it, you know. Uh, 
hopefully by the end, uh, yeah, over a course of time, well, there'll be a body of work that presents a great argument. And mm. don't know exactly yeah, what that argument is, but yeah, but even friends of mine, I think like so many people I'm talking to at the moment, whether they are like seminary in the priest, mums, um, young women who are about to get engaged or married, or all young men as well. Those people who are just even discerning religious life. Whatever it is, it seems to be touching lots of people's hearts. And even the non-Catholic friends were saying, oh, do you know what? I started praying. Or people are struggling in this lockdown time. Um, and, and I'm saying, you know, just have a look at this. Bring bring it to prayer. And friends talking about praying again. And I think I'm a visual learner and I, I appreciate seeing things. And that's another aspect of it as well. I think you can just see. Yes. Yeah, it's quite hard. I must say, when you, when you are a parent, but about the only spiritual reading you do sometimes is on the toilet. Just, you know, if I look at the imitations of Christ by the radiator. I think, I think there's a, a book title in there somewhere. I just uh... <laughs> there is, John, yeah. I didn't believe it there. But you know, tell me more about your family. Who do we have? Who that's your youngest we have here? This is, this is Audrey. Audrey. Audrey features in lots of our episodes because she's usually attached to my hip. We've got. Jemima, she's two, Hugo's four, Rupert's seven, Lani is 13. Wow. And we're a little gang, and then we've got a couple in heaven as well, thank God. That's incredible. I mean, the, there's a certain aspect of beauty in a family life, and I think that's what is most attractive about the way you present your videos. I think people are naturally geared towards what's right and what's good. And I think that is, when you see big families, you see that, you see that element of not struggle, or I mean, right now maybe you might disagree, but uh, you, you see that ah, is working ah, the, family, they complement each other. Uh, my, my mother's side of the family, she was one of seven, she was the youngest of seven. And not just and from a young age, you can see the, the closeness of them, but in older age, as they grow older and some of them need more support and more help, the family unit is so important. And I do worry about uh, the future of where we're we going to be as a society when you've got one cousin who lives here far away and one sibling who lives the other side of the country and you don't have close family nearby. You know, for, for you, you've sowed the seeds, in a sense, don't use that expression, of a, a big family, which in years to come will be not only support for you, but for them. And so do you feel that in your, like with your mum having been one of seven, do you feel that even filtering through for you now? Have you got lots of cousins around? Well, you obviously work with your cousin, don't you? Yeah, so. I do have a lot of cousins. I, mean, I don't have many siblings because my mother was married quite old. She, she married, and I should probably kill you for telling you this, but she, she married later on in life. So I've got another sister uh, and she lives in, uh, in, uh, in, in London and I have other siblings, as you would say, in heaven uh, who, who didn't make, quite make it. But uh no, I, I do have a lot of cousins who are a lot older than me, uh, but I'm just I'm just taking the sort of uh, look at the experience of my aunts who what well, my aunt died in Feb in March last year. She 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 never married. She was a she was a nun and she she lived in the convent. Then left the convent and did other work. But uh, having her siblings around and her nieces and nephews was a great support for her towards the end of her life. Uh, and as she grew older. So it's one of the things we need to keep in mind, I think, as Catholics as well, that yes, there are challenges. Yes, there's maybe more costs involved. But you're not as isolated. You've got that support network. And I think that is worth, worth doing. I don't know what you think of that. Mm, yeah, I agree. And I think also another thing with, um, again, just, just motherhood in general and having this sort of hidden life. Uh, and then with the lockdown on top of that this is just another opportunity for people to reach out and i think having sort of introduced some of these families to um you know our youtube listeners and viewers uh, they can reach out to those people and something connects with them and and you know even little messages that we get that you know all sorts of connection oh i feel like so um consoled by seeing the story of Jenny and seeing her big family and seeing how relaxed she was and calm and, and seeing the other end of it because I've got lots of little children and I just couldn't imagine being out of that storm. Um, so, yeah, definitely the, the community and, and connections. Um, I totally agree. And that really, really helps. And also we're here. like, and we, uh, You know, part of our sort of, we feel we love people. We love talking to people. We love hearing from people. And, you know, wherever they are in their faith journey or, you know, they haven't done it yet. Um, wherever you are, we love a chat. So, you know, contact us and, and you know, in that way, we offer ourselves to, <laughs> to talk. 
Oh, oh, Vader. Oh, Vader. <laughs> oh, this, is, this, is real, this is real life action we're getting. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be cow pulled up in a minute. Like if, as it, yeah. If we That's, can do a big family. That is one of the things. Like, so, obviously. I echo what you're saying there, John. Yeah, just to see the the benefit of just seeing all these films. It's a bit like going to mass, you know. If other guys see other guys kneeling down the pew next to them, yeah, there's huge value in that. Even if you don't talk to them after mass or whatever, and sometimes you're glad not to. Uh, but just to visually seeing another guy is a huge encouragement for the faith. Uh, yeah, then of course, if, if having other families nearby, you know, that is a kind of it's almost a dream and a huge benefit as well having other Catholics around you in your, in your community. But hopefully, this channel might even provide people that didn't even know there was a Catholic nearby or up the road. Uh, I'd say as well, I know we're talking a lot about big families, but it's, we don't much care if you haven't got a big family or one child or two children. It's, it's more a case of, you know, if you're trying to live out that, the faith, yeah, if you're trying to live out the faith faithfully, yeah, that's the story we're after. You know, not everybody can have mm. two kids or three kids or ten. You know, we're not, it's not an elite club. It's just if you're a mum, and not even just mums, you know, hopefully we'll get onto other stories as well. Uh, and the politics side of it, you know, whoever your favourite Pope is or whatever, or what you view on politics. politics. Let's, not, let's not go there. <laughs> yeah, just very keen. Just don't care. You know, privately, we've all got an opinion, but we're not interested in that. We're just really interested in the stories behind closed doors yeah. or in parishes. What's going on? Of How are faithful Catholics sticking to it in today's world? And mm. what have we got to offer the culture? We've got a lot to offer, Especially now with all like uh, broken families. Well, we might have been laughed at in the, but you know, maybe when you or I were growing up, we might have felt a bit, uh, you know, there'd be obvious jokes about Catholics. But I think maybe the, the laughs, the laughter stopped now. And with strong families, especially coming from the Catholic community, I think we've got a lot to offer society where there's divorce and children separated from the parents and stuff. They might be glad to see, mm. all right, you know, uh, Christianity. Uh, how are they doing it again? You know, what's their what's their approach? Yeah. Anyway, that that's all well, I've got. To say. You know, I think that's really, I think that's really important. I think you are talking about a witness. You are a witness, and you don't need to have those strong theological arguments. You don't need to have those debates and engagements which you see play out in social media. You just need to be yourself, faithful Catholics, and people, as I that's said, right. people will be attracted to the beauty of it. And uh, I think there's great. <laughs> Even your channel, we're looking forward to seeing how it's going to grow. Um, yeah, me too. With great excitement. We uh, obviously will share your, your content out to our Thank you, John. followers on Sancta Familia. Um, and I think if you want to check out their channel as well, um, how, how do you go about getting your channel? So you can we'll stick a link on the page or you can also just look in YouTube for one of nine. So I was one of nine, um, and then that will come up. And then if if anyone you know wants to watch an episode, wants to binge, we've had people saying, "Oh my gosh, I've just found your channel. I just binged a lot um, and watched it all at once." Or um, that's really great. Subscribe. Make sure to click help the YouTube channel. Who knew? Uh, what's the other thing? Share it if you know like somebody you think might be inspired by, might get a bit of hope from it, consoled or you know, whatever it might be, please share it with an individual or groups that you might be involved in. Uh, and also we're asking at the moment as well, because we've, we've sort of jumped in. We, ju <laughs> we jumped in head first um, and didn't, you know, we didn't do calculations. We didn't do all that big planning. We just sort of went with the Holy Spirit, I suppose. And now we're sort of thinking, right, we really want this, you know, we're, we're excited by the feedback, we're excited by, you know, all the, you know, all the good things that's coming from us. <laughs> And we want we want to carry on. we want to carry on. So we're asking people if they consider donating a small monthly donation, like three pound a month, or um, you know, one off if they feel you know called to it. Um, and we can continue the work because ultimately we're just you know this family. We we just getting through lives ourselves, and um, it would of course it'd be great. Um, you know, keep yeah. it keep it all free, keep it all in the public mm -hmm. domain. Yeah, we'd we'll love to get up to Scotland, uh, John, and uh, see how it's really done. Scottish. I don't. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Neither do we. <laughs> yeah, you're All welcome right. at the time. Obviously, when restrictions end, you can come up here and you can show you around uh, the another look at Carfine Grotto, which is big things are going to happen there pretty soon. 
towards the centenary in twenty. It's gorgeous spot, yeah. It's gorgeous spot. Yeah. I mean, look, we've tried. We've, certainly, we've tried very hard to kind of keep it. I kind of a UK tone, you know. Sometimes content can be a bit corny or cheesy or whatever, but you know, I personally feel like a guardian of cheesiness. You know, the, like Gandalf on the bridge. There are certain things that will just not pass. Uh, you know, we try hard. So look, we do encourage you have a look, see what you think, let us know, and share it. Help us build an audience. You know, that we're, we're kind of we're very reliant on the generosity of people out there, which we've been very encouraging signs just in this couple of months that we've been going thank you both for joining us um, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on and we'll uh, definitely be sure to encourage everybody who's watching it, uh, the Science of the channel to tune in to one of mine and see a bit of life as a big big Catholic family and hopefully share in the joys so thank you very much for joining us today and we'll share the links below God bless thanks so much John John, John thanks and keep up the great work you do too thank you for listening